Hello and welcome. I'm Vincent McCorry. This is Africa 54. First to West Africa. We are getting reports that Chad's army has crossed into Nigeria in pursuit of Islamist insurgents Boko Haram. A VOA House Service reporter in Nigeria tells us a Chadian contingent has driven Boko Haram militants out of Malimfatori, uh, Malimfatori town in northeastern Nigeria. We have not been able to get a government statement yet. Well, Islamic Boko Haram militants in northern Nigeria seized a military base and attacked the town of Bagar along Lake Chad early this month. Uh, some reports put the death toll in the thousands. Many of the Nigerian refugees uh, told uh, UN officials terrifying tales of the Boko Haram attacks, including militants shooting down people trying to escape. And now over to Southern Africa, over a thousand people now live at the Tizola displacement camp after their homes were destroyed in floods in southern Malawi, which have killed uh, an estimated 200 people and displaced over 173,000. Nearly 26,000 people are cut off from land access, making delivery of life-saving supplies difficult as only two helicopters and one boat are able to reach the trapped communities. Aid groups say more funding is needed to provide basics such as food, water and sanitation to prevent the spread of waterborne diseases. And now, uh, for more perspective uh, of the dire situation in Malawi, I'm joined via phone from Lilongwe uh, by Rafik Hajit, is the director of the Institute for Policy Interaction in Malawi. Uh, Rafik, uh, please give us a sense of uh, uh, the enormity of this uh, problem in Malawi, where you are. Well, uh, imagine in your mind's eye uh, uh, about... Uh, uh, 200,000 people um, uh, who have lost their homes, who are stranded, uh, living in schools and uh, government buildings. Uh, roads have been washed away uh, and flood plains uh, are abounding, um, where in certain places there's no, the bridges have been washed away and you need a canoe to travel from place to place. Uh, and the, the worst affected are the children, and the aged, and uh, and uh, also uh, pregnant women. The situation is pretty dire. Mm -hmm. um, the government uh, has put in place a disaster relief uh, committee that is struggling to organise uh, relief efforts, um, and they, they've been performing. They've been conducting a needs assessment exercise. Now, Rafik. However, um, mm -hmm. it is taking time to compile the figures, and in the meantime, yes. as you know, hunger waits for no one, and uh, um, the possibility of uh, death through starvation and waterborne diseases is growing by the day. Now, the Rafik, development partners Rafik. have uh, snubbed the government efforts uh, to gain to, to channel funds through government, yeah. and most of the funding is being channeled through international NGOs, which again is another challenge because um, international NGOs tend to have high uh, administrative costs. Um, I would say that the maximum impact uh, in ameliorating this problem um, has uh, come forward from well wishes in the local community uh, where uh, people like uh, uh, the relief, you know, impromptu relief agencies, including mine, have managed to gather funds, resources, and uh, are, are channeling vital supplies. Uh, Rafik, Rafik, very, very quickly, very quickly before we run out of time, you are implying that although uh, supplies have been brought into the country by the international community, you just can't get them to the people that need them. It's not, I would say that it's not quick enough, and uh, uh, the, the problem of waterborne diseases is growing because we cannot get water uh, filtration or, uh, or chemicals to purify water quickly enough to the affected areas. And the worst challenge is that the damage done to buildings and, uh, and schools um, is, is, is going to be a huge obstacle to surmount in days to come. So the challenge is not just immediate, it is a long-term challenge. Well, we'll keep our eye on this story and the developments in Malawi and Southern Africa. Thanks a lot, Rafik, uh, for joining us today.
uh, Rafika Hajat is the director of the Institute for Policy Interaction in Malawi. Now